All right. What I love about a good stunt and the choreographing of a good stunt is that most of the time it's very simple. I'm all about things being realistic. So my approach is, is I want it to be realistic. Uh, I want it to feel in my gut that it's authentic. The danger is, is not in what you're actually seeing, but in the fact that you're putting very expensive machinery into high-speed motion. He gets in the passenger seat of the car, uses the stick to rev, to rev the engine, drops the car into uh, drive, peels out, goes about 30 yards and smashes himself into a tree. Airbags deploy, car goes up in slow motion, and it basically knocks him out. Everyone panicked in the production office when, when you, particularly Bruno and those guys, said, well, you want to drive a car into a tree? I said, like, yeah, I mean, it'll be fine. Even the simplest stunt uh, is very high stakes because any kind of injury or, or, or damage uh, is hugely expensive and can throw a, a vast machine right out of wax. Jane. Are you okay? I did my own homework as a director in figuring out the best way to have to shoot it. Simon had storyboarded it and just really knew what he needed. Don't be fooled, there's a huge amount of planning that goes into this stuff. We used a crane to uh, lift the back of the car and drop it. And we shot that in reverse, so we had it going up and then coming down. Post-production even tilted the background a bit uh, and, and just shifted it as if it, that's how it would look if you were to really go up and down in a car like that. And at no time did a car ever hit a tree. I don't talk. I'm on the way. It hurts. I came up with it because it was not about the spectacle of the stunt. It was more about the, the character's action in being um, self-mutilating. You can't stay here, Patrick. There's no way they'll believe you're my hostage. I will make them believe. You want me to beat you up or something, knock you out? Uh, no, thanks. The action always has to serve the story. We never do action sequences simply because we owe the show an action sequence. The best ones land in the emotional seat of the show as opposed to just being a random car chase. Rigsby? You there? Rigsby? It's kind of an odd feeling to sit in a car and know you're gonna get crashed into, like with 100% certainty. You all right? Not really. You okay? Yeah, he'll be fine. If there's too much action, it overshadows the rest of the story. If there's not enough, uh, for a certain moment, then it feels like we're underplaying it. Drop it! This bit, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, I'm gonna find the kid. You're under arrest. I'm oh. Relax, Volker. It's over. This is the final production meeting of our season, season, season five. finale, yeah. season five, episode 522, Red John Rolls. This is Red John. How can you tell? Because when it's him, I can feel it. It's critical that you both have a firm sense of what you're doing and a realistic sense of how much you can do. First of all, we chase. True. Okay. Okay. Right, and then we turn around. <laughs> and it's up to the director to, to make that real because it's really all about the, the director's sense of movement and vision and excitement, and you can't really, you can't really put that on the page. No, he's got an idea which is good, which will either work or not work, and we'll see it on yeah. the day. Sometimes you want to shoot it um, in a very real, raw way. Other times it's quite, it's quite methodical and delicately choreographed. The action sequences don't really wreak havoc on our schedule because Either we budget the time to do them, or we don't. This is a, a huge testament to, to Chris's work on the show in five years. We've never gone over schedule, we've never gone over budget, we've never lost a day's shooting because of any kind of mistakes or errors on, on the production side. When we cheap out on it, or try and make the sequence look too small, it's cheesy and we'll just cut the sequence. Might as well just panic, go, go with him, coming in. It's not worth my time. I'm gonna do that, So what we learn is, Go big or go home. And in this case, for instance, the bus chase, that's going to be a much larger and more spectacular chase sequence than was originally conceived. It's the finale, too. It's the end of season, and we want to give the viewers something special. We're on a Sacramento street, play this uh, downtown on our second unit day. 
I design all my action stuff around the environment. Well, basically, I just talk through it while he's, while he's setting it up. Yeah, yeah. Because really, it's the only way to do it. Otherwise, you back yourself into other problems. Now, this tree's going to be open, so we get, like, free traffic in. Oh, for the background. Yeah, and you'll Russian get arm. free traffic down there. Right. Free traffic down there. Then I include the stunt people, and we figure out if it's even possible to do. Kevin Durr will take a tremendous amount of time to, to go over that with the director, uh, not only for safety issues, uh, cinematic issues, storyline, again, serving the storyline. Chris already had a vision, a uh, pretty clear vision, what he wanted, so we just kind of, Chris tells us what he needs, and, and we just bring the tools. Where are you? We're looking for Sandra Guzman, the motel maid that found the body. She's playing hard to get. We have our boys, uh, Rigsby and Cho. Rigsby's talking somebody here. And they find out that the housekeeper is long gone. We see a gal get into a bus who they're after. She goes off in a city bus, gets about a, a half a block ahead of them, and which convinces them that they need to get her in urgencies. We have six ND stunt drivers and a stunt bus driver and a doubles for our fellas. I'll shoot the front and the end first. So I'll shoot the actual, you know, them getting on the bus and arresting the girl first. Hey, Sandra. And then the rest, I'll just make as exciting as I can. Our SUV just swerves around this car. With the time that I have allotted to do it and the resources and tools I have. The bus has now beaten the lights. The bus has gone through the green lights. Most fun for me is, is getting on a motorcycle or getting in a car and really seeing what these vehicles can do in a safe and controlled environment. They're going to then swerve around a few cars. The bus will make a green light. They'll hit it just as it's red, which will cause another couple cars to kind of get binded up, cut over into oncoming traffic, which will need them to slide in front of our bus, stop in our bus, which they'll then they'll get out and apprehend the, the gal. Should we do a stunt rehearsal? Okay. Yeah, let's okay, do, so we'll do like a stunt rehearsal. I mean, stand on the sidewalk and watch it. I, I often feel like we're the kind of the smallest piece in the puzzle, really. You know, a lot of the time, the stunt, uh, you know, Kevin will have worked out a stunt where it, it's already down before we're kind of put into the picture. Planning-wise, it's very similar to a fight, except it's just stretched out over two blocks of a closed intersection. That'll be a bit of a deal for us, but okay. that's fine. An action sequence, especially where there's violence involved or fighting, you want to make that as real and as, as intense as possible for the actors. Ah. Stunt guys are geared to giving you the maximum amount of juice for your money you can, and it's your job to pull it back and make it more real. You could make things incredibly exciting, but also incredibly frightening. I don't want the boys to look reckless. You know, Murray, they're, they're cops, and they're not, they're not. Red John's, they know Red John's not on the bus. You will often see in, in stunt-driven movies, they're essentially leaping out of character and out of story in order to accommodate the skills of the stuntman, not the skills of the character that they are actually portraying. When we do a piece that is action-based, it has to land on one of the main characters. Drop the weapon! Do it now! I can't feel my arms. Please give me some help. Help me. Please, help me. I said I can't move! Ah! Ah! Stephen Rigsby says hi. I mean, choreographically-wise, it's, it's really tight. People are doing very dangerous things in cars. We'll keep it safe. We'll cheat the reverse so that we don't put a camera in this unlocked off street. It's like the army. I hope it's that. It's that precise. OK, so starting point is pretty much right where we are. There'll be no mishaps, sir. Thank you. And I've got probably a few hundred years of experience if you add up all the experience that's coming that day. If you watch stuntmen and armorers and those guys preparing for those sort of scenes, it's very much a, a, a strict ritual. It's like a sort of Japanese tea ceremony. We kind of just get in at such a good rhythm that uh, it makes complex things really simple. There's enough moving parts, so to have everyone on the same page in the stunt team is is just essential. It's just gotta be that way. We need, we need to make it really clear that town car is coming out and needs to come out at a specific moment. Okay. These guys are amazing to watch when they do it, and we have the best. Dean Bailey drives this edge vehicle. It could literally hover on a bumper this close to a car going 60, 80 miles an hour through curves. It's pretty neat. You can't stop staring at it. Sometimes it doesn't look like it's rehearsed, which is the whole point. But it's very, very, very highly choreographed. And hopefully it won't look like it in the end. Hopefully it doesn't, hopefully it looks messy in the end. Rolling! Rolling! Action! 
Safety-wise, you can't compromise any of that. You hear all the time about accidents and things like that. That's, that's not us. Planning a heist or planning a military operation, they have to know exactly what is happening at every moment. I would just leave it to Dean to tell you where okay. he wants to okay. and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, once the stunts are in, in operation, everyone will always defer to the stuntmen Absolutely. in terms of what's safe, Absolutely. what's not. If, if Chris says, can we do that, and they say no, then that's no. I remember getting given a great piece of advice years ago from a friend of mine that said, never do anything that you won't see a director do themselves. Most people, when they just watch it, they just watch the sequence and it goes by and... I mean, at the end of the day, this bus sequence is going to play for about 20, 25 seconds, probably. And, you know, it's going to take us eight hours to shoot it. But on the day when we see it happen, all the moving parts, it'll be plenty exciting. That's why it's so strictly controlled, because it's not as much as what you see on the screen is the action. Yeah, 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 that's phenomenal. Look at him. It's the motion of catching action on film is what's difficult and dangerous to do. That's beauty. <laughs> that's great. If stunts are rushed, people can especially get hurt. So I think the more that it's rehearsed, the more that we've gone over it and know what it is that we're doing, um, the safer and, and better it is for everybody. It'll be really by the numbers, and it has to be. Otherwise, we'll be uh, we'll be paying somebody for some scratched up cars, and we don't want to do that. In Hollywood, on any production that's shooting, nothing is left a chance at this level. So quite a bit goes into it prior to getting there on the day, but on the day when we shot it, uh, it was a pretty well-oiled machine. <laughs> that's the nature of the business. Another hard day at the office. Yep. Excellent. All right. Well done. Cut!